Hello and welcome to a new video about measurements. We're talking about measurement errors. Last time we talked about accuracy class and so on. And now we know, okay, we make an error, we have an accuracy class. The accuracy class should not be too sophisticated. I have to select the correct um, method, the correct device with the correct full scale value for my expected measurement and so on. Okay, we can handle. Huh? And now let's think about what this means. Huh? Let's say we have a measurement which consists, or we have a result, let's call it a result, uh, which consists of several measurements. Huh? One very basic and very, very obvious example I have here. Here I have this little box, yeah? and I want to measure the cubic centimeters, the, the, the volume of the box, right? So I have to measure actually uh, here the length of the box and, and, and then the other side of the box and the height of the box. So I make three measurements, all right? Make three measurements and each of these measurements has of course this measurement error, uh, depending on my device I'm using. Uh, Let's say I make a perfect measurement. However, I have this, I have this, uh, I have this, this, this random errors inside. Yeah? And what is now? What is now the error, the resulting error? Because then I have to multiply all those. Yeah? So all three measurements, even if they are with the same device, because it's a random error, I cannot tell if it was it plus or minus or something like this. It's the just, the just somehow distributed okay so what is now the resulting error I can expect for my volume of the box <laughs> is it three times the error or what huh? well there is the so-called error propagation law it is not three times. This is the good news. It's not three times the error because sometimes, you know, if I measure this length a little bit too much and this length a little bit too short, then they might even compensate each other. Hmm? So the error propagation law is a little bit more complex yeah? and it looks like that. Yeah? If we have somewhere an error, a resulting error, The resulting error is the square root yeah, of an error f1 plus f2 plus f3. So all the errors summarized but squared. All right. That's it. Yeah. That's the error propagation law. That's the error you could expect if several measurements are influencing your result. So if I want to write this in a more mathematical manner, yeah, I can write here sum of all fi and i equals from up to n. Whatever, how many errors are included there. All right? So this is applicable if I'm only using one device, but this is also applicable if I'm using more than one device. Okay? This is the error propagation law. It's called uh, error law. It's the law. <laughs> you cannot break it because it's simply that way. Okay, a law which cannot be broken. <laughs> uh, well, let's make one example. Okay, let's make one example. Always a huge topic. Yeah. Efficiency of a turbine, all right. Efficiency of a turbine. So I do have, I do have here somewhere a turbine. 
then have a generator. Here, water rays or whatever. Yeah. Here with the generator. Here away goes the electrical power. Yeah. Here inside I have the hydraulic power. Yeah. And the turbine is changing the hydraulic power to mechanical power, which is then transferred to the generator, and this is producing electrical power. All right? That's our small assumption. Okay? So we have here a turbine efficiency, and here we have a generator efficiency. Okay, so this means the electrical power is the mechanical power multiplied with the generator efficiency. Okay, and the mechanical power is the hydraulic power, the available power multiplied with the turbine efficiency. This is the thing I want to. I want to measure, okay? I want to determine. This I want to find out. Okay, so what things do we measure? Yeah? And the hydraulic power here? This consists of several, this you can calculate, you know? Uh, so there is uh, the density, rho, of the, it's water, right? So we know the density. This is we must not measure. Yeah. Then we have G, so the constant, gravitation constant. We also know this. We don't have to measure. Yeah. Then we have the volume flow. Yeah. This I have to measure, right? And then we have uh, the height. Uh, pressure height here. I also have to measure this. Uh. So I can write measurements. I measure the electrical power. Okay. And here I have an efficiency of uh, uh, accuracy plus plus minus 0.5%. This is the error I make for the electrical power. We can determine it very well. Yeah? Then the generator efficiency, this is known uh, with 0.2%. Yeah? Plus minus 0.2%, this is the generator efficiency. Okay. Then uh, this I know, the volume flow usually is not that good to measure, yeah, let's say 1.5%, and then the pressure height, this is again very accurate, let's say 0.1%. Okay. So we have all those things, yeah? generator, electric power, uh, here, here. They all have influence on the turbine efficiency, all right? Because if I want to, to calculate the turbine efficiency, I have to, to use all of those. Yeah? Because here I have then uh, P electrical divided by uh, eta, uh, eta generator, and here I have those things. Yeah? So all, all four things do have influence. Yeah, they all have influence on my on my value. Yeah? I want to determine. So the resulting error then is square root of all those errors squared. 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.2 squared plus 1.5 squared 
plus 0 0.1 square and the square root. All right? Yeah. And if you type this into your calculator, I will do this here now. Uh, 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.2 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 0 0.1 squared yeah, equals 2.55. Yeah, so that's the square root of 2.55. Yeah, and this is... Brrr, 1.59 percent. Right? This is the resulting error. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah? The volume flow itself is 1.5 percent and in total I make 1.59 percent. Yeah? So because of this squared in here the maximum error is influencing, in, influencing, influencing very much uh, the, the, the result. Let's say I can make the electrical, the electrical, uh, the measurement of the electrical power better by 0 0.1%. Okay. Let's say, or let's say 0 0.2. Let's not be, let's not be, um, to, to, to greedy about this. Huh? Let's say B electrical now drops to plus minus 0 0.3 percent. What would be the resulting error? Yeah? So we have 0 0.3 squared plus 0 0.2 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 0 0.1 squared. Yeah? And the result is uh, 0 0.3 squared plus 0 0.2 squared plus 1.5 squared plus 0 0.1 squared equals square root of 239. Yeah. This is 1.5. Four six percent. Hey, I made it zero to two better, and I only gain a little, little something. Yeah? And now let's say everything else is constant, and I will make this volume flow better also by zero to two. Yeah? So the volume flow is now plus minus one to three percent, also zero to two better. Okay, so the resulting error is the square root of 0 0.5, because it is then the old value, yeah? plus 0 0.2, plus 1.3, plus 0 0.1, equals, again type it in, 0 0.5 squared, plus 0 0.2 squared, plus 1.3, squared plus 0 0.1 squared equals uh, 1.99 square root of 1.99 uh, and this is 1.41 percent almost the full 0 0.2 here at 1.6 here at 1.4 almost this full 0 0.2 gain, uh, if I make this better, if I make this better, <laughs> almost nothing gained. Uh. So you see, the, the thing inside a measurement chain, or uh, which has the, 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 the most error, yeah, this is where you need to focus on. Yeah. If you make other measurements better, yeah, or other components better, it does not really matter. Yeah. If all are equally sized, okay, then yes. Yeah. But, you know, 
To make something which is already relatively good better does not benefit too much the result, the total result. If you make something better which is relatively weak, yeah, then you really gain. This is what error propagation tells us. Good, right? Yeah, error propagation. Simple, simple law, yeah, and with impact what we have learned now. Next time we're going to uh, talk about what are error components. Okay, so one error is consisting of different components. Uh, you can distinguish between those components. Uh, this will then be in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.